Oh my god. I'm so happy to see this. Oh. Oh yes. I figured, you know what? Is 2024 the last year that we don't have a Switch 2 in existence? It could be. So, I figured we had to get one of our top five games ever in here. Oh, this is just, this is, this is just, it's, it's perfect. It's, it's perfect. It's, as, as Dunkey would say, it's a masterpiece. I can't find one negative thing about the game except one glaring issue. And we all know what it is. It's too fucking short. This game should have had 50 levels with 400,000 moons to get and should have been something that I played for 700 hours. Oh, this is just... there. I, I've laid awake at night. Like, all right, man, come on. You've, you've got to find something you don't like about this game. And there's really nothing. There's, there's nothing. They, I, I guess... It would have been cool if you could have played as Luigi, but fuck, we say that every Mario 3D platforming game, and Luigi is in some of them, and he doesn't really add much. This game is just, it, it's top five for me. I, I have a top five, it's a little bit of a cheating top five, because I have two series in there that are each two, like Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom are in my top five. I count that as one. I count that as one. If I'm not allowed to, then fine. I'll go Tears of the Kingdom, just because it was more of what I liked. Uh, and it was done well in terms of more of what I liked. It wasn't just like Spyro 3, where they were like, Hey, want a skateboard? Everyone's buying Tony Hawk 2 and 3. We all know you love Spyro. Here's Spyro on a skateboard. That shit sucked. Sucked. Do not let me see one fucking comment saying skateboarding in Spyro was fun. The other one I have is God of War 2018 and God of War Ragnarok. If I can only have one, I'll take Ragnarok. Um, so God of War Ragnarok, Breath of the Wild, Tears of the Kingdom, Tears of the Breath. That's, that's Banjo-Kazooie. And this, okay, so that's four. Uh, and five is is probably Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. If you are seeing a pattern, you know, most of those are, are obviously younger audience games. I don't know, man. Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart is fucking amazing. Uh, I often struggle... Because Devil May Cry 5 used to be in there. And now that is, that is 6. That's my first game out of my top 5. But if I could have a top 6, Devil May Cry 5 is in there. I don't rank those games in any particular order. But they are games that I just... I don't... They're, they're games that I just... They're perfect to me. To me, there is nothing wrong with them. They've all stood the test of time. They all likely will stand the test of time. And this one, I, I can't tell you. I watched the year the Switch came out. I didn't get it immediately. I had a Nintendo 3DS. I saw the functionality of the Switch, and I thought, Jesus Christ, is that fucking cool. God, is that cool. By the way, this game in 2024 is still awfully pretty. It definitely looks a little more, oh, this came out with the Switch, or shortly after, than it does late game Switch games, but... I saw the functionality in the commercials, and I was like, oh my god, I've literally wanted something like that my entire life. Like, a home console that's also a handheld. I swear to god, as a kid, <coughs> I used to dream about the Switch functionality like I would think about my PlayStation 1 and I would go man why doesn't the disc thing just have a fucking computer screen in it and then I could just have a big battery and I could take it with I used to think about my N64 like that I was like hey 
the Game Boy can use cartridges. Why can't we just make a bigger Game Boy to hold the N64 things? These are th thoughts in my head as I'm not even 10 years old yet. God, just the way Mario controls. No, he can't punch, but he can throw Cappy, which is just as good. The way he can jump, how fucking just, just, it's nuts. Look at what you can do. This is the best Mario 3D platformer. Uh, if you disagree with that, I don't care. I don't care. Actually, go fuck yourself. You, we are all allowed to have subjective opinions on video games, of course. I do not want to hear Galaxy 1 or Galaxy 2. Nope. Nope. Don't want to hear either of those in the, in the same breath as this. No. No. I actually like Galaxy. Um, I have not played Galaxy 2 sans the horrible Wii controls. If they re-released Galaxy 2 and gave it the Galaxy 1 treatment of actually having good controls that aren't linked to waving the Wii remote around, maybe I would revisit it. But my whole issue with the Galaxy games is Mario feels gross to control on a sphere. On a circular, spherical object. I just don't... And this was the first Mario game to say, hey, what if you did this? You know what, here, I have another complaint. No DLC. Nintendo, I would have given you any amount of money. I would have given you another $70 for one level. All the rumors about this game were swirling, too. They were like, oh, they're going to... They're going to add in DLC that's Isle Delfino, and I was like, oh, fuck yeah. Go back to Mario Sunshine, but with this hat, and you can take over the bad guys, or... Oh, my God. Oh, just this game. You're just, you're just going to hear me. Just, just fawn over this. This is, this is perfection. This is... Oh, God. I forget how many, I'm trying to think, how how many hours did I put into this? Oh, it's not saying it because I'm not on Wash, Dad. Is it one of my most recent games? Yeah, I obviously haven't played it in a while. It's a seven-year-old game. But uh, I think I was at like 50 or 60 hours. For a 3D Mario platformer, come on. I beat Mario 64 and then I'm done with it. You know, I beat Mario Sunshine and then I'm done with it. This one I I beat and was like, oh my god, more, 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 give me more, give me more. This also is the best Mario game for end game content. Because it lets you... I mean, there's so much more to do. Sure, I mean, you could beat Mario 64 at what, 70? 70 stars and then technically your end game content could be getting the rest uh mario galaxy you can you can gather more like you can all gather more stars which this one share sure but this one actually has like oh god i i, I want to talk too much i want to talk too much about how fucking perfect this game is when we get to the first level i will i will mention why Another reason why it is better than Mario Galaxy or Mario Galaxy 2 or 3D World or 64 or Sunshine or whatever game you grew up with that you say is the best. Because that's what Mario platformers are, I've noticed. It's like Saturday Night Live. It was the best when I was a child. Incorrect. Although Saturday Night Live, I have heard adults agree with me that uh, the 90s was the best. Not my parents, mind you. My parents will tell you the 70s and 80s was the best, which is when they were growing up. And it's funny, because it's like, wow, everyone just thinks it's the fucking... And, but I have heard people in their like early 50s and 60s disagree with my parents and go, no, no, no. The Farley, Spade, Sandler, uh, you know, Chris Rock, Eddie Murphy years were the best. 
<coughs> Will, Will Ferrell, Sherry O'Terry, you know. It's kind of like Mario's kind of like that. Everyone just goes by what they love as a kid. I played this for the first time at the ripe old age of 29, and it is still number one Mario Odyssey. Yay! Oh, my God, it's such a good game. It's a genius, too. Nintendo was geniuses when they made this game. They took something from Banjo-Kazooie in this game, and they one-upped it. <laughs> I think most of you who are fans of Banjo-Kazooie, you already know what I'm talking about. I do not begrudge Mario games in the past for doing this. I understand it was literally just making the game longer. Shigeru Miyamoto admitted that this thing that this game doesn't do was put in Mario 64 and Mario Sunshine and Mario Galaxy and Mario Galaxy 2. To make the games longer and nothing more. They were like, yeah, we needed to pad the game. People were, were going to beat the game too fast if we didn't do this. By the way, look at this. Look how pretty this is. I don't care that it's 2024. If you're playing Pal World and you think it looks good, then you think this looks good. And mind you, the Switch is obviously very underpowered. This is the start of the Switch. So this was before the devs kind of knew what they were doing which by the way I'm I'm kind of upset we never got a sequel but I understand they want to wait for the uh, it, it, I, there's like a rule that they have with Mario where every Mario platformer is like the introduction to a new console Mario 64 was the the N64's game you know, Mario Sunshine was the GameCube, Mario Galaxy was the Wii, Mario Galaxy 2 was the Wii and the Wii U. But here we go. You want to see something? You want to see something that you can't do in any of those other games I mentioned? Look at this. Look at this. We're on a level, and we gathered the thing that we gather. And look at this. Look at this. Oh, we're not leaving the level. We're not going back to Peach's Castle. We're not going back to the fucking giant floating Mario head. We just continue on. We continue on just like Banjo-Kazooie when you got a jiggy. You got a jiggy, keep on fucking going. Mario Odyssey, you get a moon, you keep on going. But, now this is where they take it a step further. When you get these big special moons on this platform, the fact that the level changes is so goddamn cool because Nintendo was probably thinking like what do we do what do we do if they're not gonna go back because they couldn't probably think of a hub world for this game I mean maybe the Odyssey was the hub world early on but they were like god it just doesn't make any sense what do we do here's what we do we scatter a lot of moons around the level but some of the moons will be main story parts of the level and it will change the shape of the level that is god damn genius it is genius i i swear to god that old style of mario 3d platforming better never come back it better never ever come back it should be gather the main collectible and keep going from here on out like oh just just this this game was made with an orchestra by the way like th what you're hearing in the background music wise is a fucking orchestra that's the shit they do for fucking the giant ass budget final fantasy games oh the, the effort and thought put into this game i'm gonna cry i'm gonna actually cry oh this game is just it's chef's kiss oh there we go. Oh, just everything. Nintendo went against the grain. They went, you know all those like cooking shows you watch? And there's competitions and every now and again a chef is really good. But the, the, the judge will be like, you know, you cooked here. You did it. You did well. But you didn't go outside your comfort zone. I want to ask you, if we travel back in time and ask Shigeru Miyamoto after creating Mario 64, hey, what about... Mario in a T-fucking-Rex, baby! Woo! He probably would have been like, you smelly-ass American, get out of my face. What? This is definitely not Nintendo's fucking comfort zone. 
But they were like, fuck it. Um, how do I attack? There we go. What else do we got to do with this large boy? He looks good, by the way. Like, graphically, there's nothing you could really do with this thing. That's why, like, when, when people complain about Switch graphics, it, it, it just pay them no mind. Seriously. Like, it, it's silly. It's silly. Yes, it is, it is nowhere near the Series X or the PlayStation 5. That's because this was released with the One and the fucking PS4. And no, it's not on that level either. But, gee, which one, which one sold the best and is still selling? By the way, updated numbers, 140 million sold. It's about 13 million away from the 3DS. I, I hope it, it takes over the PS2. I, I'm, I know that sounds cringy. You shouldn't worship any corporation ever. Because they're all evil to a point. But like... God damn it. God damn it. I want to fucking blow this entire dev team. Oh my god. It was so good. Oh. Woohoo! There's like no... There's no part of this game... That makes me go, oh, it's this part. You know what I mean? You know how every one of your favorite games kind of has like that part where you're like, uh, uh. <coughs> Banjo Kazooie for me, it's Mad Monster Mansion and uh, Rusty Bucket Bay. Not a fan. Oh, by the way, in this playthrough, I'm going to get a lot of shit. I want this to last as long as possible. Do -do -do -boo! Um, uh, spoilers, obviously, for a game seven years old. But the way they end this game, too, with going to Peach's Castle, and you get to collect stars, and the stars make the same noise they made in Mario 64. And there's paintings to jump into. The only thing that disappointed me was, man, why couldn't they have just given us, like, Bomb Bomb Battlefield? Like, just give us one level for Mario 64 with this game's rules. Like, oh, that would have been perfect. Instead, it just kind of holds a big boss rush. Which, again, I'm, I mean, they didn't owe us any of that. The game could have just simply ended. But no, they were like, fuck it. Give him Peach's Castle. Give it to him. How about this? How about this? This right here is wonderful. The music goes all retro-y. There's moons in this part. They're wonderfully incorporated into the levels. It's like, I, I, I can't. <coughs> and then even even after you beat the game, those, those blocks, you find those blocks and the levels change again. So the levels change the first time you visit them. Throughout your playthrough of them, they change. When you leave and come back the first time, they actually change again no matter what. There will be something different about the level. Like if I if I, uh, I don't I don't have enough moons. Later in the game, I'll try and show an example. Every time you leave from a level, it it will evolve and change a little bit. <laughs> Whether you've done all the storybook things you want to or not, like you can very much advance in this game. There are enough moons on every level to where if you know where they are, you don't need to like beat the main boss or anything. You I think you do it eventually. To progress opening up new levels. I do think these bunnies are kind of weak. If I had to point to any weakness in the game, I, I never was a fan of these brutals. But then again, I'm glad they didn't go with the fucking Koopalings. I, I'm not a big fan of them either. Um, but just... Uh, okay, so the levels the levels change, and then... Oh. They fucking change again when you beat the game. After you beat the game, you go find those cubes on each level that the game showed you, by the way. You find all these cubes, but you can't activate anything on them. And then you beat the game, and the hat's like, Hey, wonder if we found one of those cubes right now what would happen and it, it releases a bunch more moons and then changes the level again so without 
like leaving the world, they found a way to change the levels, which is so fucking cool. Because in Mario 64 and Mario Sunshine and Galaxy, certain stars need the level to be cons like configured a certain way. Like, you can't have Koopa the Quick in Bomb Bomb Battlefield and have the Bob Bomb King on the top of that Bomb Bomb Mountain. Like, you would race Koopa the Quick and then the fucking king would be up there. So you have to choose that star to go do that specific thing on that level and the level will be tailored for you to get that star. This was a game that was like, how do we solve that problem? We'll just make the level evolve as the player plays it and so we can tailor story part moons. Like that moon we got it now is just part of the story. It's one of those crown moons. And now we have enough to go to the next level. I th think... So right now when I leave this level and come back, there will be new things. There will be new things that are not currently here right now. I think I can do some of them now? I could be wrong. Oh yeah, no, there, there's a moon up there. I don't know if that moon was there. I could be wrong. Here we go. This chain chop was not here. Now he is. And now this is here. Do you see what I mean? And I, I like, I don't know if some people were turned off by how many moons are in the game. I fucking loved it. And I do know Nintendo said that was part of the, because the Switch was a handheld console and the, the Japanese really like handheld consoles. They thought, you know what? This is going to be a thing people turn on when they're on the bus or the train. And maybe they'll just want to progress by grabbing a couple moons and turning it off. Rather than like, okay, I, I have to go for this and I have to do it or else if I turn it off, I'll start it in the main hub world. So it won't be that stressful. God, just, just, they were just, they were cooking. Nintendo was just on some shit. Hint toad? Nah. I never 100%ed this game, but I think in my main file I have like 800 fucking moons. And by the way, to the to the, the ever-increasing audience of, oh, it's a Mario game, it's too easy. To beat the game? Yeah, maybe, sure, but trust me, if you want every fucking moon in this game, let me tell you, there are some, you, you'll say, you know what, I'm gonna go play Dark Souls instead, because that's easier than getting this fucking moon. The fucking one where you have to jump rope a hundred times? Oh my god. Disgusting. Disgusting. I hate that one. The one where you have to volleyball a hundred times. Trust me, there's there's some moons in this game where Nintendo was like, alright, you motherfuckers bitching about easiness, here you go. <laughs> here you go. We'll give you something easy. All right, let's see. I just, I want to soak in every level and do as much as I can. Uh, a fucking T-Rex. The game does technically start you off with a frog and a chain chomp, but like, come on. So the Switch came out. I'm thinking, okay, that looks cool. Oh, good. There is something here. Uh, functionality looks cool, but what about games? You know, what about games? Because the Wii U, everyone I know hated the Wii U. Oh, good. Um, the crazy thing, too, with the Wii U is Nintendo kind of self-sabotaged themselves. Because a lot of their big games came out for the 3DS as well, like Smash Bros. came out. So I was like, yeah, I mean, as long as I can get Smash Bros. and Pokemon, I don't think I need a Wii U. But the Switch. Then the Game Grumps. The Game Grumps, dear old Dan and Aaron, started playing Zelda Breath of the Wild in the spring. And I was like, oh man. So the Switch, I think, came out around the holidays. In what, 2016 and then 2017? was when it like really caught fire because of Zelda Breath of the Wild did a lot of heavy lifting for the Switch early on admittedly so but then that October this came out too <coughs> and I was like okay 
That and the fact that Mario Kart Deluxe was a game that I actually could not enjoy on the DS and it looked fun on the Wii U. Damn it, I'm like missing it by an inch. Um, I thought, all right, there's three solid games to get me started. It was Breath of the Wild, Mario Odyssey, and I saw the Oni Plays crew. Mr. Ding Dong, Julian, and Chris uh, started playing this. Oh my god, the fact that you can even do that. And I, I, I immediately, like, I literally felt like a goddamn child. Like watching, I was like, I have to have it. I have to have it. I want 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 it. Every episode would come out of Game Grumps playing Breath of the Wild and Oni plays playing this. And I was like, why do I not have a Switch? Why do I not have a Switch? Uh, so, uh, this is the part of the conversation that gets. Uh,. Uh, 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 awkward, but, you know, my ex got this for me for <laughs> my Christmas one year. Oh, well. I got her expensive stuff, too. <laughs> it was even. Oh, no! So, uh, thank you, person who bought me my Nintendo Switch. God, I think there's another one in the water here. Oh, what a freaking game. What a, what a, just, god damn it. The way I felt at age nine, like playing Banjo-Kazooie and the way I felt playing this, completely, completely 1,000% identical. That's hard to do. You know, when we get older, we lose a little bit of that childlike wonder that we have, and we become old curmudgeon adults. I'm guilty of it. We all are. So to, to, to make me feel like I'm fucking nine years old again, and the Switch just kept doing it. Breath of the Wild, Mario Odyssey. <coughs> Alright, I think we can head to the next one. Just want to make sure I... Oh, there's something to be done up there. I can get those purple coins. Oh, yeah, that. Get back here. This is the best one. 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 And we never got Mario Odyssey 2. I swear to God... If the next Mario 3D platformer on the Switch 2 is not a continuation of this, I will lose my shit. If Galaxy was worth getting a sequel for, goddamn, so is this. I guarantee you this sold better. God, I wonder what the lifetime sales are on this game. It has to be extraordinary. Oh wait, there's something down there too. There we go, these little hat doors. Look at this. Look at a little peach. A little peach right there. Nice touch. I'm X's sometime. Oh, and the, the pro controller I'm using to play my Switch was given to me by another X. <laughs> the Nintendo Switch. Oh, God! Oh, yeah, I, I completely fucking forgot, too. This game lets you dress Mario up. This was the game that introduced Mario Nipples! Which upset a great and many people. Oh god, yeah, these little parts too are fun. I swear to god, every Mario 3D game that has these little parts that are supposed to be, like, disconnected from the real game, they fucking suck. Especially fucking, what, what is it, Mario... Uh, uh, Sunshine, they're the worst. They're the worst part of the game. Oh, God, I just, I'm like, I'm out of breath. I'm out of breath. Oh, damn it! Okay, well, I guess it's fine. Oh, it just, it feels good. It looks good. 
it's just this is this is god damn it nintendo if you do not give me what i want i will show up at your headquarters naked with mario printed on my balls so unless you want that your d goals seem uh pretty standard now how do i get down there Yeah. Oh, look at me. Oh yeah, I remember. Oh, we re we replayed this game a lot. A lot. Oh yeah. Oh no! <laughs> God damn it, I got too excited and I forgot Mario has momentum when he fucking does that. You know what? I was not a. God damn it. I will say the disappearance of lives for coins being taken from you it makes me feel pretty good. I feel like that's a that's a good in this game it's a good punishment because you don't want to lose coins because you want to buy Mario's little outfits. I don't think I didn't notice either, Nintendo. You put fucking Waluigi's clothes in this game. How about you give him a game? How about we give our boy Waluigi? Oh my god, could you imagine Mario Odyssey, but it's Wario and Waluigi. I would accept that wholeheartedly. Oh fuck, did I do it again? Alright. All right, I gotta concentrate now. This is the first goddamn level. Oh, I can't believe I did that. I'm just too excited. I'm too excited to start this series. I'm way, way too excited. And I wanted to wait until I'd beaten Mario Wonder and Mario RPG. Because I was like, we can't have all this going on at once. Are those episodes on YouTube yet? No, of course not, but, you know, I figured I should be done with this and all episodes should be out. God! Uh, at least by the end of 2024, maybe by the, the summer? Nope, not where you go, dude! So thank you X number one for the switch and thank you X number two for the for the uh the pro controller. Alright. Alright, let's remember now Mario has weight. He has momentum. Yay! Oh, good. You're all going to be able to see the date now, too. <laughs> so you're going to know. You're going to know how far in between we go from recording to actually the shit landing on YouTube. Just blowing the whole lid off the operation. Oh, what a game. What a game. This, 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 then we were off. The switch was off. We were off. It, it was it was Breath of the Wild. It was Mario Odyssey. It was Smash Ultimate. It was it was Pokemon Sword and Shield. It was fucking goddamn everything. Wait, no, there's something over there. Oh, we we, we this will be. This will be quite a long series. I don't want this one to be over. Okay. What? Excuse me. I am a seasoned veteran here. <laughs> there is a way to get up there. And I will try one more time before I give up and I come back. Damn it. Damn it. All right. We'll wait. 
I, I know there's a fucking moon over there, isn't there? Son of a bitch. All right. Can't make episode one too long. I have so much more. I have so much more! Hell, this game made me find the underwater level was okay. The underwater level is fine in this game. Because they finally gave you controls that weren't ass. That's impossible to do in any game. Oh, well, here comes the token underwater level. All right. Nope! This one's fun. They let you control the cheap cheap, which is the fish. Which means swimming around in the water level is actually fun. Oh my god, yes! Feed it moons! Also, how adorable was that every level has a different colored moon? Like, come on. I, I Like, they could have all been yellow, and I wouldn't have cared. But the fact that every level has its own moon. The fact that this game made it moons. They could have just made it stars. Or shines, but they're like, alright, we've done stars, we've done shines, which look like stars, but they look more like the sun. Uh, so they were like, let's do fucking goddamn moons. Oh, we can go back to the Cap Kingdom and actually get more! You know what? We'll decide. Uh... Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do the Sand Kingdom, but eventually, eventually, when we land at the Sand Kingdom, then that's it. Then that's it. We'll play something else. I will stop coming all over this game. The cartridge is just covered in jizz. Oh my god. The Switch. Uh, like, I, I'm speechless on what just most of the games on this platform have done and I'm so happy to hear that Nintendo's like hey by the way the next one the next console we make just gonna be a better version of this better graphics bigger screen better controller that's it you're getting the switch to great thank you <laughs> don't don't stop that thought process fucking people that like Sony and Microsoft too had the balls to be like oh Guess they're all out of creativity over there at Nintendo. You shut your goddamn fucking mouth. Show me show me you picking up your PS5 and bringing it somewhere and playing it easily. All right, my Switch fucking fits anywhere. I almost hope the next Switch they make the dock smaller and easier to maneuver, although it's already pretty goddamn easy. Oh, yeah, controls. Yeah, don't care. Basic actions. This is cool. It's like, wait a minute, why are there... And then look, all the things you can capture are right here. Which, I'm going to tell you, I was pretty far into my normal game when I discovered the last few. Oh, my God, the fact that every level is themed. So Bowser's trying to marry Peach... The hat level was where he got her, like, tiara. Uh, what did he need from this level? I don't think he needed anything from the dinosaur level. We were just chasing him, and that's where we ended up. This level is where it has a big diamond. Like, every level is, like, wedding-themed. And on this level now, this level will change as we go through it. And, and the fucking moons are different colors, and the birds are different on every single level. And, oh, I can't stop! I can't stop. Can't stop the thing to this game now. Gonna play it till I come really hard. Lord only knows what my children, child, and girlfriend think upstairs. Well, on that note, look at Mario's face every time you save. I swear to God, I think they did that on purpose. Where he's just like, oh! <laughs> All right, folks. More of this. More, more of this? It makes me all tingly. Tingly, tingly and warm inside that we're doing this. This is going to be 74 episodes, each one 45 minutes to four hours long. Um, I don't, I, I just, oh God, I'm so excited.